Okay. So you're trying to win over the perspective of your judge with the framework of your debate round, meaning that you're trying to put in their perspective, what do you want your judge to take away from this round, right? So it's kind of like the story that you tell, you want to make sure that they agree whether you're pro or con, you want them to agree with your side of how things should be. So with that being said, you frame the best arguments for judge, meaning you make the rules for how a judge looks at your arguments. And the way that you do this is with your claim, which is your opinion, what are you arguing or trying to prove, right? Your warrant, what are your reasons and justifications for why your claim is correct? And that's usually supported of fact or expert opinion, impact, effect, why your claim is significant, right? And any questions about that so far? These, these are the key things of what you're going to, I hope you guys are taking notes. I'm sorry if I didn't say that already. These are the key elements of an argument of what you need to cover. You need to have a claim, which is your opinion. You need to have a warrant, again, which are your reasons. And then you need to have an impact. Why is what you're saying important in the first place, right? Like, why is it an issue that we need to be active now? Any questions about that so far? Give me a thumbs up if we good on that. Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right. So parts of a case. So first you need an opening, you need to get a go attention getter, right? Which is usually a quote or your real story, a startling statistic or an analogy that relates to your side of the resolution. This should not be a full piece of evidence or it should not be long. It should be, a, it should be something to get the judge interested in hearing your side of debate. At the end of it, include a transition phase. So example of that is like, before introducing the resolution or because we agree, my partner and I stand pro or con to the resolution. You guys understand that so far? So it's kind of like when you're writing an essay. You know how your teacher tells you you need that attention uh, getter sentence in the beginning of it? It's the same way that a debate round is constructed. So as you guys are learning how to do these things, you'll also see that it relates back to your writing. So you need that attention getter. You need, what are we talking about? Why do I want the judge to listen to me? So then you go to the resolution. Remember the resolution is the topic and your guys' topic changes every two months. So with that being said, this, year, this month's topic is should we approve the 2019 Medi-Cal bill, right? I'm gonna explain that more at the end of our conversation. I'm gonna show you guys what the evidence is. And again, it'll be ready by the end of today. I was just adding a couple more con things in there for you guys. So resolution analysis and definitions. So you want to set the terms for what is, what is the resolution and define what are we talking about, right? So one thing about a debate is terms are so important because everybody interprets things differently, right? So when I say let's get food, what I think is food might be different from what Sophia thinks is food might be different from what Carson thinks is food, right? So you want to be the one that defines for that judge and your opponents what is the definition you're going for in this round, right? You want to be clear. You want to be concise on what your plan is and why they should go with you, whether you're pro or con. Any questions about that so far? Good. Some resolutions have really difficult terms and that significantly alter the debate and it is necessary to define those terms. It is a good idea for students to have definitions available for all of the key terms in the resolution. So if a word gets you tripped up on it and you're reading through it and you're like, yo, I don't understand this, that means that you should probably research the definition and make it available for yourself so that when you're in a round, you can ask that during cross-ex because you want them to also be able to identify what's going on, right? Contentions. Students need to clearly state each contention. So contention one, which is basically saying like point one of why we should agree, right? So get used to saying that as you're speaking. And I'll, again, I'm gonna show you guys the evidence and it's clear. Contentions. Students need to clearly state each contention, contention one, and then state the claim, warrant, and impact of each argument. Contentions can have subpoints which support a larger claim. Students may have more than one warrant for their claim. Each warrant slash impact is a subpoint. Students need to organize language like subpoint A so their judge can follow their arguments. 
Students should probably limit themselves to three contentions in a speech to ensure that each argument is developed fully. So that means that in this topic, although there are going to be multiple ways you can frame it, the strategic way to do this is to narrow it down to three arguments. And so remember in that bottle evidence pack I'm going to share with you guys, you only have three arguments in there to make, right? And so you are more than welcome to read more evidence cards to make those arguments, but you only have three main arguments that you're going to go for in the evidence. Questions so far? Anything about terms you guys got questions to? Okay. Keep going with y'all. And if I'm talking super fast, please let me know because I just talk fast. I've been debating for like 11 years now, y'all. So if I'm ever talking too fast, be like, Maya, please stop. Okay. So conclusion, this is where you're going to tell the judge why you deserve to win. This is, this is that pulling at the heartstrings, your topics, your facts. This is why you're going to tell your judge why you deserve to win this round, right? So conclusion, you bring the speech to a close by typing, tying your speech back to your attention getter and using a final quote or startling statistic to drive home the reason the judge should vote for you, right? So you want to be able to tell them that the reason that you are, um, the reason you should vote for novice is because novice is our reason you should vote for pro is because if you don't vote for us, the statistics of global warming happening is like 45% more likely because you didn't vote for pro side or because pro side is better than medical gets. We have medical for all people. If you don't for, uh, vote for pro, nobody with medical will all get sick and we'll have more deaths on our hand due to coronavirus. Like you need to be able to tell in summary why it is important that they vote for your side. Questions about conclusion. All right. So we're gonna go to lesson one, argumentation. So these are essential questions to what makes a debate and what makes um, argumentation. So. What is a complete argument is something you need to be thinking about. What is the difference between your claim, warrant, and impact? And how can I analyze the resolution to build my strategy? So this, this month's resolution is, as I said, let me pull this up for you. Show you guys the evidence now. Hold on, you guys. I'm about to pull you guys up, y'all evidence. This is your guys' evidence. I know I'm going super fast, so I'm trying to get to the top of it to show you guys. So this one's evidence is the United States federal government should enact the Medicare for All Act of 2019. So then you go down and you're scrolling in it. And again, this will be available for hard copy. So if you are like, hey, I need this, it'll be available in a hard copy as well for you guys. So there are some instructions in the front, as you guys just saw, of how do I use this evidence packet. Um, yes, it will be posted on a Slack by the end of the day, the completed version. I just haven't added you guys' con side in there yet. So that's the only reason it's not available yet. So here again is the directions for how uh, your guys' debate will go. So what is your debate? As I mentioned, you guys do public forum debate. Here are how the speech, here are our, how the speeches go in order. So remember when I mentioned that you do constructives, you have crossfire, then you have final focus. This is where those things fill into. So as you see, speaker one has a constructive, you have four minutes to present your case. Speaker one has a constructive on the con side, they have four minutes to present their case. Then you have something called crossfire. Crossfire is cross X, where you guys are asking questions for either a better understanding or to trap somebody into the um, into the argument, right? So if I tell you that a certain case makes like 75% global warming, right? You, and, a, and you have a evidence card that says that 75% um, global warming is not enough to cut global warming. That is the time where you trap me in that so that in the next speech, which you can see next in the rebuttals, you can bring up that what she said in that cross X or what he said in that cross X does not stand true because it's not going to make a dent in the evidence I have. So you're either trying to trap them or better understand their plan that they just read. Questions so far? We good, y'all? 
So these are the constructions of a speech. As you see, you have two crossfires and then you have a summary. That is where you're getting into those last two minutes of why are those three arguments you've been talking about this round important? You have another grand crossfire where all four debaters are gonna be involved. So that means you, your partner, your opponents uh, um, will be going against each other in cross sex. And then the final focus is two minutes long. Each team is entitled to two minutes of prep during the round. So that means that in the round, you and your partner are allowed to communicate to get a better strategy. So I suggest doing this after speeches so that you guys can get together on your questions and how you want to prepare your next speech together. Um, the thing about us being online this year is that you can't really... Uh, it, when you guys are in the round, it's not a good strategy to like scream across the screen to your partner what your strategy is. So I do suggest as you guys get partnerships that you get their numbers so that when you have to use prep time that you can just call them and put yourself on mute to better strategize. You're welcome to scream it across the screen, but then the judge and your opponents know what you're about to do. Questions? Y'all can put them in the chat. Y'all can scream them out. It does not matter. So again, this pack will be available. So how to make this pack yours? When you see you make it yours, you put your name on it because you can't lose your evidence. And you highlight it, you mark it up, and you're going to take notes on it. You got two months with this pack. Every argument, every round you guys go into is going to be a different round with different people on how they feel that Medi-Cal should be handled. So you got to know, you should take notes because what if you hit somebody, and when we say hit, that means go against. If you hit a team that had a really good argument that you think you should use, well, guess what? In debate, in the next round, you can use it. Like, it's not owned. If something was really good where you felt like, man, that was a good argument. I think I lost that round. Use it. <laughs> like that is the best strategy use it how do i get better at this you're going to be taking notes in all the conversations you have with these people you're going to be taking notes in them rounds so the best strategy person is the one that takes notes consumes it thinks about it and then tries to make that argument into their own make it better what it, what was it that in, that got you stuck right because if you lost on that somebody else might be losing on that so when you get your evidence, you're gonna see it staple. Make sure you unstaple it. When you see a box like this right here, that means that you're gonna write in your own words. What is that card trying to say to you? Underlining is so important because as we mentioned before, you guys only have four minutes in those speeches. So you have to underline and highlight what you wanna read so that you're not spending frivolous time reading stuff that has nothing to do with nothing. So you wanna really get to know this pack and again, this pack is not long, it's not hard. And if you guys have questions at any point, you can always ask me. So citations. Citations is who made this, right? Because how many of you guys see people argue on Facebook? Or y'all don't be on Facebook? I don't know where y'all hang out at. Where do y'all go? Reddit? Oh boy. <laughs> like, like where else do y'all go i'm so curious where do y'all hang out at i don't know where do y'all get information at and engage with people not just the information like mm, they're crazy i'm not talking where do you guys go and engage tiktok yes where else insta i'm an instagram person too you guys can shout it out you guys can put it in the chat whichever you guys want to do shannon you're smart <laughs> Snapchat. So how many times have you guys like got on social media and people were arguing and nobody has evidence? Like they're just like, my mom's a doctor and therefore it's true. Is that evidence? All the time. <laughs> so that's that's what this is about right citation is super important because it validates where is this person getting this from like did you get this out of a rabbit hole like did the dog whisper it to you who told you this so you have to have proof right it's not enough to just say 
I heard or I put on a white coat, therefore I'm a doctor and you should believe me. That's extremely dangerous rhetoric, right? So we want to make sure that citations, which you guys see right here, is always up to date so that even if your opponent, if your opponent reads something crazy to you, you can also like, can I get that evidence card? And you can read that evidence card, right? You can see if it came out of some crazy Facebook conspiracy group, and therefore that's why we should not read this ever, ever again. This should be burned. <laughs> like, any questions about that so far? That's why citation is important. And when you guys are looking for evidence as we get better throughout the year, you'll see like, okay, I need to make sure I, where did I get this? Did I get this from CNN? Did I get this from MSNBC? Did I get this from Fox News? Who gave you that information? Did you watch it on the news? Was it on social media? Was it your personal story that you know to be true because you have an experience with it? Those are the things that you can use as citation. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, if you're ever reading through the evidence pack and you're like, this is crazy, I don't like this, then of course you can go ahead and, I'm sorry, you guys. Then of course you can go ahead and email me or you can shoot me a text or you can Slack me because I wanna hear from you guys. So yeah. Then we're going to go, hold on, you guys. Then we're going to go down. This is, again, y'all, evidence. This is the same thing you guys be used. But you see, it's like it doesn't say the correct things. Like it says template still. It'll just say case. So the case, again, is that resolution. Remember what we were talking about? So the resolution is the United States federal government should enact the Medicare for All Act. Do you guys even know what that is? Who knows about Medicare? Let's start there. Remember, we said define stuff. So let's define it. And I know y'all know how to use Google and social media because the same way you're able to stalk your boyfriend's ex-girlfriend who goes to that other school, that is research, you psycho. You're going to use it now. So like... The same way you know what that girl had on yesterday, you're going to use that and we're going to go find what is the Medicare for All Act of 2019. I'm actually going to paste this in the chat because I want you guys to get the exact wording. And then whenever somebody gets it, y'all going to shout it out. I want y'all to tell me what is the Medicare for All Act. That is the first step. What, what are we talking about? What is that? Is it gummy bears fall out the sky? Is it boogers? Is it coronavirus and a gummy bear? What is it? Share it out if you think you got it. Um, is it anybody? Okay, anybody? Y'all both can go. Either body. Either one can start. Every person living in the United States has guaranteed access to healthcare with comprehensive benefit benefits. Who? What was the next one? Who else got one? Thank you. Was that everybody's? Everybody got the first one or something? <laughs> like, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> like, but okay, so who could tell me who came up with it? Who's proposing it or who was proposing this? Because that's another thing, right? Like, remember what I said. This is a, light, a lot like writing an essay. Who, what, when, where, how? Who wrote this? We know it was written in 2019. Where did this come from? Yes, Zach. Zach coming through with the examples. So this isn't a fairyland. That's a great example you guys should write down because guess what? When you're in a round, somebody going to ask you, where, where have we done this before? And you can't say, I don't know, and get aggressive. That's not the answer. So who could tell me who wrote this? Who, who's proposing the medical Medicare for All Act of 2019? Is it um, the United States fall government? Bernie Sanders. There we go. Bernie wrote it.
Okay, sorry again. We're having all these issues with tech. Give me one second. Hold on, you guys. I'm, I apologize. Okay, so this is the this is our act. Like I mentioned before, if you guys go to this, if you find this box, that means that okay, what am I trying to write as the shock quote from a famous person, or why Medicare is important for all? Right, you, that's that topic sentence what we were just talking about. That's gonna go right here in this box. So my part, remember we go into the transition. My partner, I firmly affirm the resolution which states and remember this is a resolution at the top so here are your three reasons for for pro remember i said we wrote you guys a speech if you're in the novice division if you would like to be in varsity they have the same case but it's a lot more arguments to cover and it, it's about 100 pages long it is good if you're interested because once you see a novice novice is a very shorter in pack so if you're interested in being more competitive there is a varsity division for middle school public forum that you guys can be in and that packet is ready and I can share that with you guys if you're interested in being in varsity but again this is the novice pack so you see this is limited to three arguments right and everybody in that division in novice division has the exact same evidence so you won't be against somebody that you've never heard what they were talking about okay so the three reasons for Medicare for Medicare for all is one, Medicare for all improves the quality of research. Two, Medicare for all would decrease the medical discrimination. And three, Medicare for all saves people from bankruptcy. So again, those are your three points. Any questions about that so far? Those are your contentions. Remember how we were saying like contention one is Contention two is, contention three, kind of think of it like a table of contents. So claims, warrants, impacts, going back to our lesson plan. So step-by-step, step, you already know what the resolution is, is Medicare. So what... So either pro, an argument and an opinion is a call to claim, right? An argumentative opinion. So argumentative, uh, argumentative opinion is like we just show, uh oh, like we just showed. Our medical Medicare for all improves the quality of research. That's a debatable statement, right? I'm sure we all have different opinions on. Do you guys think Medicare for all will improve quality of research? We get more info from more people, so in some cases, yes. Okay, yes, you're right. Who else? How do you guys feel? Who else? I feel like we need to research more before we can have an opinion on some. Who else? One more. The question is, do you guys think Medicare for all will improve the quality of research? So that's what I'm saying as far as, remember, a claim is that argumentative opinion. That is, it's just a statement that could be debated, as you guys can see. That could be debated. It Will Medicare for all be able to increase the quality of research? That's a debatable statement. So the way that you make this statement true is you need evidence. And that's how you prove this is true. A fact or expert opinion for a claim is called a warrant. Warrants answer the question like, why, right? So why is what you said true? So going back to the evidence, I see that you said, like, how will we make sure that what we're saying is true, right? What do we do to come up with that type of stuff? There is evidence provided, as you guys can see. 
evidence is provided to support all of the contentions in there. So contention one, medical, Medicare for all improves the quality of research. And here's the evidence to say, again, here is the statement for all of you guys. That's the citation. And then here is the actual card of evidence that backs up what that statement was. And then from that, remember how I said you need to highlight and underline. So you're going to read this card and highlight what you think is important from this card to be read. It is not going to be the entire card because remember, you have four minutes. So this is just one card. You don't have to read the whole thing to make it true. You just need to read the specifics from it. As you scroll down, you see contention two. So then you go into Medicare for all with decreased medical discrimination. And then here goes another card that backs up why that would be true. Here's where it's from and cited. And then you go to your contention three. I'm gonna keep reading. Medical, Medicare for all saves people from bankruptcy, right? So then you're gonna show why, why it's important that people are insured to prevent them from going into bankruptcy. Here's that evidence. Any questions so far? Hold on, you guys. So any questions about the pro case so far or any confusion? Is it good, bad? Do you guys kind of understand it? Questions so far? So we just went through what was your pro case. So why do you guys think that these are important? Why do you think this argument is important? And why should people in humanity, the audience or judge care about your argument, right? So that is going to be your third piece to when you're explaining your evidence, like, why should I care that people will go bankrupt? Why do you think somebody should care about that? What is the harms in that? Anybody? What are the harms in what we just read from the pro case so far? Nobody? Okay. So my question is, why would a judge care about the questions and um, why would a judge care about what you read as being your main points in your pro speech? So remember, your main points are these right here. Why do you think these would be important to summarize to the judge as to why they should care? These are your main points. Why would these, just any of them, why is Medicare for all going to improve quality of research? Why is Medicare for all would decrease medical discrimination? Do you guys understand what I say when I say quality of research? Kind of got you. So when I say quality of research, I mean that, um, so each year, each medical pharmaceutical company does research and development for uh, their drugs, right? So it's a big part of their budget so that they can um, continue to advance their medicines and make it marketable, right? So research and development is super important so that medicines are always competitive and that they are always working for the best thing, right? You're fine. Um, here is the novice medicine. Hold on. Hold on, you guys. So that you so that's research and development and then so medicare for all then you go into with decreased medical discrimination do you guys know what i say when i mean when do you guys mean know what i mean when i say medical discrimination 
I can't see y'all faces, so y'all got to tell me. Ella. I think it means, like, um, you're a certain someone, like, if somebody was racist, um, if you're a certain someone, they're saying, no, um, I'm going to be racist and say you can't come in. So uh, uh, that is a great example of what I'm talking about. So medical discrimination is like, um, so our medical history has had like a messed up past towards certain people of color, right? Just the way that it has come about being. So like um, in the past, black women were used to like sterilize, uh, work out women's health organs and stuff like that. They used to like constrain slaves down to medical beds and enforce the force things inside of them to test out whether they be good enough for women's like um re women's bodies and stuff like that and the assumption that they made for that was that black people could withstand more pain and that's why they could be able to do that now is that true absolutely not but because of that there's still racism in the medical field so like there's been studies that show that most people who are now even still entering the medical field have the sometimes the assumption that black and brown people can uh, uh, make up how bad their pain is or how intense their pain is. So they're less likely to prescribe their medications. That's a problem. Do you guys understand what I'm saying with that? Yes, no, maybe, yes. And so also saying like, okay, so LGBTQ people as well are impacted by this. It's not just a race thing. It's also like, you know, LGBTQ are people, they're less likely to go because they don't want to be judged off what's going on in their personal lives, which means they're more disenfranchised. And when I say disenfranchised, it means like, it means that they're more likely to be harmed by things that are already bad because they're already not seeking medical care. So I don't know about you guys, but like when I think about my personal family, like, how many of us have family members that don't go to the doctor either because they can't afford it, it's out of reach, like it's too far away from them, or because they have their own suspicions about what our doctor's doing? So if you, you guys know what I'm talking about, y'all don't, if you guys have examples or family members or friends or anything like that, like think about coronavirus. The people who have been like more susceptible to being harmed when catching coronavirus are people who already had health issues. So think about, I'm assuming most of us live in Oakland, right? Or in the Bay Area. How many of you guys know, like if you live in Oakland flatlands, so like when I say flats, I mean not the hills area, but if you live in Oakland flatlands, did you know that your life expectancy is 10 years shorter than those of Berkeley Hills just because you live in a polluted area? So off top because of where you live, which you really don't have choice over because of other things, but because of where you live, you have a 10 year less life expectancy. It's like stuff like that when I say discrimination, right? And having serious health impacts, right? Because think about it too, and I'm just speaking from Oakland because I'm from Oakland, like if you live in the flatlands of Oakland, train tracks run through here, freeways run through here, all of those things are pollutants into the air. So if you live in those areas, you're more susceptible to be like have asthma, like I have asthma. And so because of that, if you were to get coronavirus, which literally attacks your lungs, you are more likely to pass from it. So do you guys understand like the combined, why that's important that people get medical help? Like I go to the doctor for asthma, but should I have, if I didn't have controlled asthma, that would be very detrimental and I'm a mom. So if I get sick, think about my family, think about my son, it's a rolling domino effect, right? My son is seven. How would he provide for himself if he doesn't have a mom anymore? So that's what you want to bring home to the judge as to why these things are more than just fairy tales or uh, abstract. You know, you want to bring it home of like, it's important because these have real impacts when people don't get health services. You want to tell that story. Remember how I was saying you want to connect the dots for them. You don't want to leave any room for them to think, well, maybe everybody won't die. No, everybody's going to not be able to take care of themselves. And then Medicare for all saves people from bankruptcy. Do you guys know what bankruptcy is? It's, so bank, who can tell me? Um... It is financial protection. Oh, public bankruptcy. What is bankruptcy? Define it. Let's look it up, y'all. Look up. What is bankruptcy? Hmm? It's basically 
Uh, it's a protection of your assets if um, it's protection of assets if um, mm -hmm. um, it's when someone is unable to pay tax yes what happens when you go bankrupt you think they give you a pat on the back? Yes, and it is running out of money. Y'all look it up. What does bankruptcy do? What what do I, what happens if I go bankrupt? That, remember, we define this stuff. So these are all things you're going to be asking your opponents in cross -ex. What do you mean when you say bankruptcy? Why is that important? No problem, Asian. What does that mean? Why is that important? All of that. You want to be able to know. So tell me. what I need y'all to look up. What is bankruptcy and what happens? Yes, Shannon, you can't pay your bills. What else? What happens? Elijah puts them in the chat. Bankruptcy is a legal process through which people or other entities can, who cannot repay debts to creditors may seek relief from some or all of their debts. And good job, according to Wikipedia. Two snaps, not Facebook told me. <laughs> Facebook will tell you it's a great thing. File it. Don't do that. <laughs> good job, Eli. Who else? What happens if I file for bankruptcy? We want to know what happens. Y'all got to tell me. If I file for bankruptcy, what happens to all my stuff? Do I get to keep it? Do I got to give it away? Y'all got to tell me. Ella. You don't get to keep your stuff, and you might have to sell, sell your stuff to make money. They want their money, right, Ella? They, not, they don't care. <laughs> like, that wedding ring, take it off her finger. Like, so going bankrupt is a terrible thing. You can't pay for your properties anymore, so they probably will be. Yes, y'all are some smart middle schoolers. Don't go bankrupt. That is the lesson here. You're learning faster than adults. They still go bankrupt. So bankrupt is when you can't pay your bills and you can't pay your debtors. So you've like accumulated so much debt. There's no way you can pay for it. And therefore you file and say, I'm broke. And they're going to have to take everything I own to try to pay out my debts. And we call it even right. But it's not really calling it even because one, if they find out that you're hiding assets. So even if you had like a thousand dollars in your boyfriend's account and they find out that that's a thing, you will be in trouble, serious trouble for that. Plus, when you go bankrupt for 10 years, I think it's either 10 or 7 years, it stays on your credit report. So it makes it extremely hard for you to get things like housing is tied to your credit. It makes it hard for you to get credit, uh, car no, all of your livelihood things, right, that you're going to need credit for. You now either have to put the money up for or either you have to... Um, you either have to put the money up for it yourself or either you have to settle for high interest rates on loans that make it almost impossible for you to try to keep up. There we go, Shannon. Y'all getting this. Yes. So you need to be able to tell your judge that. Why is it, why should I care if people go bankrupt? Okay, yeah, you lose your stuff. People lose stuff all the time. But think about if you were a parent, what would that do to your household? If the government's like, you can't have nothing because you filed for bankruptcy. No credit cards are going to loan to you. Nobody's going to give you anything. What do you guys think that's going to do to a household? Yep, Shannon, you right. Eli, yes. Ella, you had your hand up, mamas. I was just going to say you'd um, go homeless. You're right. You won't have a host. Oh, Eli's real. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not funny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> they, they could take the kids away. Y'all are smart. Yep. You won't have money to sustain a family. You won't have a family for long. Yes, Shannon. It is that. So this, this, so how we just broke down, so as you guys can see, debate is like a conversation, right? So the more you understand and you can set the terms for that conversation, the more engagement it has and the more you're better able to control your debate, right? So these arguments that we're all talking about has been all of the pro side. So any questions about pro side yet? You won't be able to pay for your needs. You're right. Y'all are, are absolutely right. So then we had the in conclusion. So remember what I said about conclusions. When you get to the end, you want to be able to tell your judge why you think you should win. 
So in conclusion, my partner and I firmly agree that XXX, and we, we use the three main points to support the pro side. Medicare for all improves the quality of research. Medicare for all will be a step toward eliminating racial inequalities by giving everyone access to insurance. A large percentage of Americans are afraid of bankruptcy from medical bills, right? And how we just had that conversation about why are these things, like we said, a domino effect, why are these things really, really bad and how fast they can happen is exactly what you need to be able to tell your judge. So that is the pro side part one. Questions about that? Questions, comments? And then we go down and these are, so the second person, your partner in this speech will be the one that carries on the arguments from what you were just talking about. And here are some extra cards that you and your partner can discuss about how you want to construct that speech. So it's not just those three evidence cards that I showed you directly under your constructive. You also have more evidence in the back that you guys can pull from and if you are like hey i want to i want to be challenged and i want to do more than these three arguments again i strongly encourage you go to the um you go to varsity shannon tell me what you don't understand what question And as you guys practice with this, because we'll do speeches, you guys will see that it's like, you guys will get the hang of how it goes and how things flow. I'm not sure how many girls for all of this quality of research. Okay. So here is some more evidence that agrees with why Medicare for all would increase, would increase the quality of research. So as you see like this card, Medicare for all would allow the government to negotiate drug prices with corporations, right? So that's important because if the government is the one that sets the norm for what um, the prices are supposed to be, that stops price gouging. So people won't be able to like up the price. Uh, I forgot this guy's name. Let me look it up. It was a guy a couple years ago who bought an AIDS company medicine and then he hiked the price up of the AIDS medicine um, because people were more dependent on it. And so it went from a pill that was like $20 to about $5,000. And so things like that, if the government were in control of who can set the prices and at what, they couldn't do stuff like that, which means instead of hiking up prices on medicines that are already available, they would have to move that money in into instead actually inventing better medicine. So that's how they would be competitive as opposed to um, um, hiking up the prices. I'm about to show at higher price. I'm going to give you guys his name in like two seconds. Let me pull him up. He was a he was a strange guy. He's in jail now, but he also ended up like buying a rap album from Wu-Tang Clan, which is like this old school rap group. He was a weird man. Martin Shkreli was his name. I'm about to put that in the chat. His name is Martin Shkreli. If you guys want to check out who he was um, and if the evidence of, if, ugh, if you guys want to see who he was. Yep. So, as you guys can see, I like Zach's mind. As you guys can see, these are this is your evidence of why those statements that we made are true. And remember, they're all debatable statements because this isn't necessarily going to be true, right? Just because the United States sets a price for them to follow doesn't mean that they're then going to continue to do business with the United States, right? There's no absolute in that. So there are, don't think, just be, the best debater is able to debate both sides of the debate without knowing how you feel. It doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is the black and white and what we're debating about. I don't care if you don't feel that's fair. I know it's cold, but welcome to politics, boo. So this, so again, more evidence. There is only a trade-off between innovation and market access if prices remain high. Um, is that true? We don't know, but here's a card that says that is true. And again, looking back to when was that dated? 2016. I'm sure there's more evidence to prove this. Yeah. 
and then again, each new drug brought to market says 11,200 lives a year. And it's it's on both sides. I mean, it's it's evident cards cut for um, all your contentions with multiple. So Medicare for all would give American access to free mental health treatment, which is especially impactful for the LGBTQ community. That's about allowing everybody in without discrimination. Medicare for all would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. There's cards on that. Um, so there's like, as you guys can see, multiple ways to take these statements and make these arguments. Uninsured adults are 25% more likely to die prematurely than those with health insurance. So then again, further building your case onto why it's important that everybody has access to Medicare and that Medicare for All Act passes. Two thirds of all bankruptcies are related to medical bills. You have cards on that. Serious change to the system is necessary to save people from bankruptcy. You have cards on that. Um, and then this is your con side. I can show you guys a little bit of that one too. So just to add on to that last point of like bankruptcy with uh, the pro side, with people going into medical bankruptcy, think about how right now we're in the coronavirus, right? If I was you, I would research how much is it costing people who have been in the hospital right now with coronavirus, right? We want to know how much is these bills coming out to, right? I'm sure there's articles about that at this point. So again, you want to define what is it costing people to even get sick right now today? I know it is, Shannon. So <laughs> what is it costing people right now today? If I was to get sick, what am I expecting as a medical bill, right? And then we want to add on to it is, are people working right now? So you incur this $100,000 debt. Are you working right now? What if you have kids? What if I have rent? What if I have mortgage? Can I really give a hundred thousand? What if I have student loans? So if I only have a choice to go bankrupt, again, what does that do to my family? Because I got sick? Think about people who are at risk. Like, I'm a working professional, um, and, but I'm, I'm in the position where I'm able to work from home. Think about people who are an essential workers who don't have that, who are more at risk. Like, can they really afford to get sick? The lady at the grocery store who has kids, can she get sick? Can she afford to get out of debt if she gets sick? So like, those are questions I would be asking in like cross-ex, right? Of why Medicare is important. What is the cost of like just getting sick right now with coronavirus? What is the cost of getting tested if you don't have health insurance or you don't know where to go? Or even the impact of like, we live in the Bay Area, but what about people who like live in rural, I say this wrong, this word wrong all the time, but what about people who live in rural America? You live in California where you guys got a little bit of safety nets. What if I live in Mississippi? Do you guys know the difference too between like national and state governments? A little bit, not yet, it's all good, okay. So the reason why Trump is super important, you got a little bit, Zach, thanks babe. The reason why government is super important, um, especially the current administration is important, think of it like they are the manager of the country, right? Trump is our manager, right? So you'd be like, I wanna see the manager. That's who the manager is in the corner of America, Trump. <laughs> so <laughs> the manager of our country is the one that dictates the orders as to what's going to happen to us, right? So that's why you hear a lot of people saying like Trump needs to issue a national mandate that everybody wears masks because he is the manager for the entire nation, right? But instead, our president has deferred that to state by state action. When people say state by state action, that means that they're leaving it up to the governors of each state to make decisions for their respective states. And so states like California believed in the mask mandate, right? But you got states like Florida who have told people they can go back to work. You see how that's a problem? <laughs> like, imagine you're running 50 different schools. It would be good if you made a rule that says everybody must wear clothes to school. But if I sit there and say, nope, I'm going to let every school decide if they want to wear clothes, it might get a little crazy on who decides to wear clothes and who doesn't. Questions about that? 
the difference between the United States actor and the actor of state government. So when you hear people say like United States federal government, they're talking about management from the United States government, Trump. When they talk about state by state, they are talking about governors. That means the manager of your state. So we have Governor Newsom. That is your manager of California. And then you guys have mayors. Your mayor is the manager of your city. So if you got a problem and you say, I want to call the manager, those are their managers. <laughs> like, and Southern states used to be primarily Democratic before the voting acts in the 60s, which prompted the switch to the right. Zach is somebody I better watch out for. I'd be partnering with Homeboy. <laughs> like, yes, they did, Carson. So as you guys see, these, these arguments can go everywhere, right? As you see, it's like so many talking points of how we can have a discussion about this. So yeah, so I'm going to show you guys the case for the con, and then we're going to wrap up for the day. So this, as a, woo, so as the con side, what do I do when I'm con, right? So when you're con, you don't have to make a plan. That is not your job to come up with an alternative plan for them to run. Just like real Congress, you don't have to have a plan. You are just there to tell them why they are wrong. <laughs> like, I don't have a plan. My plan is that your plan is going to make us all burn. <laughs> like, the answer is no. Pretty simple. <laughs> I don't have to have a plan. That is not why we are here. I am here to poke holes in why you're going to kill us if we do your plan. And again, no, you don't get to choose what side you're on. So don't get comfortable. Like, I can say no, no, <laughs> like, because you're going to lose all your yes rounds. <laughs> Any questions so far? All right. So then you get up there. If you are a negative or a con, you'll say this bill specifies it will cover anything medically necessary but gives the Secretary of Health the power to change that. So that means in that a world with more conservative Secretary of Health, Things like gender affirming care, reproductive care, and et cetera will be eliminated with coverage. If the Medicare for all, all system does not provide coverage, we will be right back to the status quo where there is a cost barrier. So I know that's a mouthful, but again, remember how we were just talking about management? So Trump delegates out two pieces of who's over what. So you hear Secretary of Housing, which is like Ben Carson. Are we defending against a team who believes in men? So no, if you are pro, you're defending that there should be Medicare for all. If you are con, you are saying that Medicare for all is bad because of the following. And so one point that they make is that the Secretary of Health, which is like Trump is the manager, but Trump designates certain pieces of the government out to other people to be managed. So like Ben Carson is Secretary of Housing, right? Um, you have whoever is the Secretary of Health, that's going to be the person that's over all our health and, and um everything that has to do with health and us being healthy and all those things. Uh, but the thing about that is it's based upon that person can be conservative or liberal, right? Cause things change with each administration. So you got to think who can tell me what is our current administration? Are they liberal or conservative? What's our current, our current administration? Thank you, Eli. It's very conservative. Somebody Google and tell me what is conservative. What does that even mean when I say conservative? What am I talking about? Like, I conserve food. What I'm talking about? Again, we're going back to definitions. What is a conservative politician? What, what is that talking about? It's a person who holds traditional political values, as in ones that happened in 17, the 17 and 1800s, mm -hmm. um, where, the, where you know, the powerful actually controlled the country, the ones who owned a lot of land. Who else? Tell me, what else are some more conservative ideas? When it comes to health, let's be specific, right? Who is the current Secretary of Health? If I was negative, I would want to know who's the current Secretary of Health, and I, wanna, I would want to know where they stand so that this isn't even a maybe. I know your plan isn't going to work because the Secretary of Health is conservative and would never vote for this. So who's the current conservative or who's the current Secretary of Health and where do they stand? You're very right, Carson. Mil military is very uh, pro-conservative, usually about protecting America first. Alex Azar. And what is Alex Azar? Is he conservative, liberal? What is he? 
a good person. He likes dogs. What is he? He's a former pharmaceutical executive and a conservative. What does that sound like to y'all when y'all hear that? Does he does he sound like he might be in your favor? I'm a far, I'm a former pharmaceutical executive, and now I'm over the health of the United States. Oh, what'd you say, Emily? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> see, and y'all can't even vote, and y'all can see through this mess of like what? <laughs> your manager hired him as a manager. <laughs> like, who else? What do you guys think? I want to hear from all of you guys. What do you guys think? of Alex Azar. What do you guys think that means for us if I'm the con side? I know y'all got it. I mean, seeing as many Republicans stand on the side of pro-life, those that could be changed. They will change for most of the country. How many of you guys remember, like, one of the first things Trump started talking about when he got in office was, like, eliminating Planned Parenthood? Kind of. Do you guys know, like, the argue? So I'm not here to tell y'all about abuse of abortion. That's inappropriate for me as an adult with you guys. But just to let you know, Planned Parenthood is also a really local, like, resource for hospitalization and immediate clinics and stuff like that for people. So... The, their argument why it would face so much backlash is like it's not just a reproductive source but if you have a conservative government and they're like we're no longer going to fund things like that right what does that do to the people that rely on these so as a con you're saying that if we even if we were to approve this plan that they have under the current administration it would not pass and we would be worse off because the people who you were intending to hurt would be even more disenfranchised because you would say this system is for them, but then they couldn't access any of the things that they need. Because the administration would make it difficult like it is now. Questions? All right. So then you got... Point two, by decreasing revenue of pharmaceutical companies, they will be forced to cut back on innovation because of how expensive it is. So tell me, I want y'all to see, I want y'all to Google, how long does drug innovation take for pharmaceutical companies? How long does it take for a drug to be created and put on the market? And if you can, find out how much it costs. Remember, who, what, when, where, how. It usually takes 10 years for a new medicine to complete the journey from, from its initial discovery to the marketplace. And it usually costs about $2.6 billion. Do you see why it's easy to just buy somebody else and then jack up the price? <laughs> like, if you want to be in the pharmaceutical game, do you see why that's just like a little bit easier to just buy somebody that's going out of business and jack up their price? Anybody else find some other information about that? How long it takes? Okay. So then pharmaceuticals will sell drugs for low, low prices in lower income countries because the half outright donate these drugs. When companies face profit losses, they will either have to increase the prices or cut back on donations. So um, currently the way that these companies work is that they donate the excess medicines that they have to like, third world countries or developing countries to help people have medical access. So the NAG is making the case that that would be cut if the government is now um, the one controlling that market because they would have no motivation to keep their names public and like be doing good things because it's not a market where that's needed. So they're saying like, if you're living up to the goodwill of these companies, they're probably going to cut back on that because they'll have to spend more money on places that they want these.